come over because you mentioned bottom up and uh, I was just thinking that would be a great title for a, a show if we were saying how do we follow this up but and and but that would be we could call it bottoms up but uh, <laughs> but you know for a lot of you who are are uh, watching you know we just shared these deep metaphysics you know which are really profound but we did mention allude to that Jesus made the correction from the bottom up so in other words he he just didn't appear in time and space and say all is one all is God I speak now the non-dual truth then bow and say like Truman good afternoon good evening good night and poof he was gone it probably would have been forgotten in human history if he had just come and spoken that all is one and disappeared but he seemed to heal the sick, raise the dead, resurrect. He seemed to have all these parables about the two commandments, the first two, mainly the first two commandments. But um, for many, I'm sure that what well, Ken and I were just sharing, that bottom-up thing that you mentioned, that I, we mentioned, and Jason just mentioned, that we, our community is following Jesus and we're, we're going at this correction, the way he's instructing us moment by moment and guiding us. Uh, and I know like in, in the Advaita Vedanta, the non-dual tradition, there's this defense mechanism that you'll hear some teachers talk about. Some of you probably have heard it, the Advaita shuffle, um, where you just say all is one, all is God. And there's, there's a sense of denial of the body uh, some of you might remember in A Course in Miracles that Jesus says that, that the denial of the body is the inappropriate use of denial, Jesus says, because you so firmly believe in a body identity that to try to deny what you so firmly believe in, it just short circuits the healing process. He still will use those teachings, I am not a body, I am free, but he does come out and say that that's an inappropriate use of denial and that's kind of a good lead-in to the bottom-up approach. I mean, that could eventually be a show, Bottoms Up, a new show, Bottoms Up, because I was talking about the person calling into an, a, a non-dualistic show where we're just talking about love and oneness. What, I've got cancer, and, or I just got thrown out of my apartment, or um, I'm facing struggles, I'm facing uh, suicide, I've already had a, f a false attempt, but I failed, and I'm, I'm suicidal thoughts, or all the predicaments and problems of the human condition, where we're not here to just kind of just use uh, all is love approach, we're actually here to raise the darkness to the light, and that means to expose the unconscious mind. It's, it's very much of our approach. It's very, very practical. Some of you have even may have seen uh, one of our recent, was it our most recent online retreat where um, our friend from uh, Unwind Your Mind, Pete, well, Pete James was on. I think that's how we ended the online retreat was him speaking from his hospital uh, bed with his chemo treatment. And, and, you know, that's what we're talking about, inviting Whatever the perceptions are, inviting whatever the thoughts are, inviting whatever the beliefs are, because we shared earlier that a lot of the beliefs are unconscious and they're not, not in awareness. And certainly our Saturday night, uh, last night, we were using clips that Jason had prepared for exposing things that, that, that the mind is not aware of, of unconscious thoughts and beliefs and patterns. And so... This is, I would say, a very authentic pathway to healing that is not into denial or glossing over things or candy coating things or just coming up with, uh, with affirmations. Time to, uh, some of you remember Michael Ledwith was in that first What the Bleep movie. He was the guy at the end that said, you know, positive affirmations are like putting a smear something positive or something that's really dark underneath. You might remember him from that movie. We're all about exposing everything that's dark, not hiding anything, bringing everything out. Our discussions are very open and raw. In fact, if we had a, 
like a, a little camera in some of our houses, some, most of the world would be shocked at the openness. Our friend uh, Lewis was talking to his girlfriend and was reporting back uh, about some of the conversations that he was having. And she was like, oh my God, I can't imagine uh, such openness. You know, it was like frightening. But, but healing is frightening to the ego and, and the ego needs to be exposed and rinsed and washed away. So, yeah, when you, I mentioned bottom up, you just mentioned it over there with Kristen. Maybe you can just share what your experience has been on this journey, even for yourself with the bottoms up. It's, big, it's a very deep, uh, it's a deep idea. It's a deep, deep approach. We have so much gratitude for it because it's so helpful, so effective. Yeah, it was the opposite of non-dual. I, uh, I believed in a lot of specifics. <laughs> I and I loved using specifics. I felt like the only thing I understood was the idea of guidance. And so, yeah, for me, just being able to join with you from when I first came in and even heard, uh, heard, I mean, this is radical, but <laughs> just heard follow David, you know, for me, that was like, what? You know, because I never really heard of non-dual even, or even thought of having a teacher. I thought I was just coming in to be good friends, living in a house, and very quickly. Sharing some resources. Sharing some resources. <laughs> I got a good deal. Here's my 20000 I got a house and a bigger portion, you know, the ego still. Mm -hmm. But it was like Jesus was was there using what I believed in. But yeah, I guess that's a bottom-up approach. Mm -hmm. Like For me, it was just a big adventure to share silverware and a room and a I got a good bargain out of the deal. <laughs> I mean, I always had this strong call, but the best call that I had could have related it to was I would have got a much better self than the one that I had. And I didn't realize that instead of getting one key from you, I thought I was missing one key and you would give me that key. You asked me to give over a thousand keys over the coming years <laughs> that I didn't know I had. Like, this key works. No, it doesn't. This key works. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun for us, too, because um, we are very open-minded and welcoming. And some of you know there's a friend of ours, Lisa Cairns, is a non-dual uh, teacher, pretty well-known, and invited her to our monastery. And had, but, but over the years, that's, that was actually some years ago, um, our openness and uh, our kind of, we kind of welcome um, the use, the spirit's use of relationships. And uh, what we found is that for some non-dual teachers, they wouldn't want to touch um, relationships and the use of relationships with a 10-foot pole. I mean, it's, it's, it's a daunting kind of thing because you know, I remember in her words, a lot of stuff comes up. She's... People were drawn yeah, to her and yeah, to yeah. live with her, and she was like, "I don't, I can't even imagine how you guys do things." But this is a very deep approach that we've practiced with Jesus for me decades. So it was decades in in kind of really coming to practice and keep using it and keep using it in the face of huge darkness, like powerful darkness that would seem to come up. It really was just illusions, but at the time it seemed to be devastating when it was coming up. So we, we use relationships and mirroring. We use guidance. Uh, it's a highly guided community. And then, as I've mentioned before, even, uh, even Judy Scutch told us that Helen had had a vision of a, of a spiritual community. Uh, it was a, with a, like a white temple overlooking Water's the water. Place. And it was, yeah, it was all this, prophecy that seems to be involved with our community in the in the overall plan and remember with Mary Baker Eddy there was a lot of prophecy before she came on the scene um, this is all part of a prearranged script of awakening and those are just little tiny little symbols but when we talk about using making the correction from the bottom up that is saying we're not trying to say that truth is an answer for all the perceptions of the world. It's just that the truth is so far beyond perception of this world that, that 
there's nothing in the perceptual world that really resembles truth in any way. That, like Jesus says, truth cannot be described or explained, but only experienced. So all the words of even the Course and all the, the Bhagavad Gita and all the great scriptures are just like these tiny little pointers towards something that is so glorious and so magnificent, and yet the only thing that's real. So the escape from falsity, uh, we're saying, we're using the approach that Jesus has taught us and, and what he used was uh, from, from the bottom up. We're not trying to use truth as a correction. We're, we're actually saying there is a, a correction in the mind called forgiveness, but we have to bring all of our darkness to the light of forgiveness for it to disappear. We have to expose it all. And when we say expose it all, we mean, like the Course says, you, you, you have to be willing to expose everything or you'll be blocked from the light. And so that's quite an amazing thing that we've been working with for a long time. Even to like, the, probably the thing that we're experts in is to, is to be given a relationship, to use it, even though it seems horizontal in the beginning, only to go vertical. Like, how do you do that i mean that, that sounds like everybody wants that but how do you actually do that I, the, the holy spirit is like the how yeah. but but if you don't have a direct contact like ken was saying a direct contact with jesus or the holy spirit then it seems very mysterious like sentimentally it sounds good uh we'll devote our relationship to the holy spirit but actually in practical terms moment by moment day by day when the darkness raises up how do you do that and that's what your whole show you and 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 i were that was how you started your show today it was this sense of control and like a strong sense and then you moved through it even during the show and i was like i feel great i feel great as there it was right there even the 30 minute show was was an ex was a, an example of bottom-up healing it was beautiful using relationship for extending was it? yeah yeah yeah, so the relationship, the old way, like I could see, it's all about getting in the relationship, but in the Holy Spirit's way, it's what can you give, learn to give, and that will just flush everything through. Whereas before, it's like, okay, now you're my girlfriend, right? Behave yourself. And you think you're going to get all your needs met, right? This is good. Finally, someone to do what I want. <laughs> 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 but yet you learn through this to give. <laughs> yeah, let go of all of that. Well, we could have a show, Bottoms Up. <laughs> my show. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey's at your show. It's my show. In. <laughs> go. <Bottoms> up. <laughs> yeah. Write in your ideas to the chat. What you would like to see on Bottoms Up. <laughs> You know, normally that means like, yeah, bottoms up, cheers, cheers, bottoms yeah, up, yeah, bottoms right. up. This is, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, following the last step <laughs> with Jeffrey and Frank, then bottoms up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the bottom of the mind, all those dark beliefs, yeah, turning them up to the light, yeah, that's more what bottoms up is, but... Maybe it's like a show of parables or people asking in their specifics or something. Yeah. It could be a comedy show too, because you know, <laughs> when when you when you get into a relationship, it it may seem romantic and attractive <laughs> at the beginning, but usually on planet Earth it, it can turn into a drama and sometimes a nightmare. And then that's when you need comic relief. That's when when it starts to turn into a nightmare, that's the time where you most need bottoms up. Uh, you need to actually have a way to turn it around in your mind and say, this is trying to teach me something. What I'm witnessing and experiencing is actually trying to get my attention in a big way, and it's really trying to teach me a, how to forgive in a big, big way. That's what the bottoms up approach does. It takes it back into the mind and says, you should be grateful you know, you, you can never over-appreciate uh, a brother or a sister. You always 
underappreciate a brother or sister. And, and that's because you don't realize they're mirroring back something to you that you absolutely need to look at because they're mirroring something back from the unconscious mind that's out of awareness and that they're doing you a favor. You shouldn't be blaming them. You shouldn't be divorcing them. You shouldn't be you know, ready to string them up when they're actually doing you a favor, your mind a favor, and, and it's not seen. So the bottoms up approach is how is this a favor to me? And, and that is quite amazing, whether you use movie clips or we all have so many humorous parables to tell so many funny parables, but they're all bottoms up jokes, you know, because we think we know what's going on. We think we're upset for a good reason, you know, or what were you saying? Do, do behave, now behave yourself exactly. or something. We say to our, our partner, our friends, our coworkers, our, our neighbors, behave yourself. And then when they don't behave themselves, in, our, in the judgment, then that's a bottoms up call for help. But we, you know, <laughs> just like the 12 steps started with Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob, bottoms up could mm -hmm. take hold. We don't know. Jerry Jampolsky wrote <laughs> Love is Letting Go of Fear, that little tiny book with the little caricatures on, and it got translated with all these languages and went all over the world. Bottoms up could, uh, <laughs> it could be the next big trend. <laughs> It could sweep Hollywood. It could sweep the Cannes Film Festival. It could sweep all over the world. But when, when people realize that there's just another way of looking at the situation that you could laugh at instead of cry, instead of scream, you know, that would be good. Well, that's it, because it's easy to, like, when things aren't going right, it's easy to just say, oh, forget this. You're obviously not doing what is suited to me. But yet, really, the relationship is just bringing up all of this self-hatred and whatever else is down there perfectly. Yeah. And that's what I found. And that's why I, I didn't want to get into a relationship. Because I said, listen, I have got a lot of self-hatred. It's as simple yeah. as that. And I normally project it onto the other. So if you're up for that, then <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what's going to happen. So that's your choice. And it's like, okay, I'm willing to do that. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, if you check in with Jesus, Jesus would say, yeah, that's what I've, I've exactly. had planned for you. You've been exactly. asking me for help, and here you go. That's I'm it. giving you your bottoms-up helper. Yeah, that's it. He's like, yeah, here's a romantic relationship, but really it's all about self-hatred. <laughs> <laughs> does trick you. you know, whole, <laughs> I was thinking about that. It's like, it. it's like a trick. It right is, it's a total trick. <laughs> Bottoms up. Bottoms up. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, my love. <laughs> Kristen's drinking too. Jesus. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <He's crazy. laughs> and that's the beautiful thing, though, so it can all be released because otherwise you're just hiding it and all this guilt, like, oh, God, am I the only one that thinks is in, in the world? Obviously not. Yeah. Let's roll off. <laughs> yeah. We could invite uh, Greg and Jenny up to talk about the box because uh, <laughs> Jason made a clip and, uh, and we were just having fun reviewing the clip, but suddenly there was the box, which the box represents um, scanning and, <laughs> and getting in touch with uh, unconscious uh, wishes and desires and beliefs. The box? The box? box basically knows what you need to see before you do it's consciously consciously and so that's the setup for greg and jenny <laughs> <laughs> the application of the box because this was actually a a clip that that was a uh, minefield episode minefield episode that was showing a box that scans when people put electrodes uh on on their head it actually scans for like 15 minutes all of the unconscious activity that's going on in the mind prior to your conscious decisions. So it's a very helpful box. It's a, they've developed this box. And so Jason was very excited to, to show this to me because, you know, people were becoming frustrated that they, they were, the box could read their decisions before they would make them. 
and, and would actually could could know when they were going to make a, a, a take an action and everything. So it was showing about the unconscious mind, not something to be dismissed. That's why we like the box on bottoms up, because you have to get in touch with what's what's under there. And, uh, and this box was a great, it's like a great thing to invite into your relationship. So I was humorously just, when we were seeing this, I was pausing and saying that uh, Jenny and Greg, Jenny, some of the issues you've dealt with for years, the box could be tremendously helpful and, and the, that Greg should offer it as an anniversary gift. Greg brought it right into play, uh, the box speaking. He, he wasn't going to wait for the, the wedding anniversary. He sprung into action. So maybe we should let them tell you, how did you use this simple idea of this unconscious box prior to your decisions to help bring some humor and release into your relationship? Okay. <laughs> I guess this is because Jason always says we are a comedy show when we <laughs> join together in public. <laughs> Greg's like, he's pretty practical. <laughs> well, sometimes I have a problem making decisions. I guess that's what's underneath this. And you were shopping. <laughs> <laughs> we went shopping the other day. Greg <laughs> said something. Yeah, we had a couple opportunities where <laughs> where I was able to uh, check in with the box and um, <laughs> let Jenny know what Greg it said. Greg is my box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Well, yeah. The I guess the funny part was that. Um, there was a question as to whether Jenny should shop more. And I checked in with the box and, and it said that Jenny reached the max limit. She, she met her, her quota for the, the month. So that's, that was the, yeah, that was pretty funny because the response back was, was that that quite didn't fit Jenny's plan, <laughs> but she didn't realize she had already made the decision which is what the box was all about. <laughs> so, you want it? So it said we have no free will. <laughs> yeah, ultimately we really it don't have free will. <laughs> so well, it helped I mean, you get in touch with the, some of the beliefs and patterns underneath in a way that felt very helpful. It, like it gave you a way to talk about some of those things. Whereas before it might have felt awkward or, you know, hidden. And the, this was just a bottoms up device uh, to become more conscious of the decisions. Yeah. yeah, it was perfect timing too, because in the, in the past, you know, I had held on to my own ideas so strongly about it too. So with this, I'm not, I'm not really invested in what the answer is either. So it's much more playful too. It's like perfect symbol for my mind that I'm, you know, not so much invested in it. And but, yeah. So it applied to shopping, or what about driving? Driving. Like it's yeah. like the, sometimes we have a backseat driver or mm -hmm. someone who's actually driving the car with the hands on the wheel, and someone who's offering tips and instructions. Yeah, right. That can happen. <laughs> In relationships. Well, we drove the other day to La Casa, and and the way to La Casa, we pass another road that goes to Ahijik, which we often take when we go to the mall to Ahijik. And that day we were going to La Casa, and we had a little thing happening <laughs> because I we are kind of telepathic and connected, so. I picked up that Greg was going to turn right um, towards Ahik while we were going to La Casa, and I pointed it out very quickly to him, and it seemed like he had an upset. Yeah. Well, here's <laughs> this is another take on the box because <laughs> Jenny can be the box of thought for my guilt before I see it. So. And that's and it's being used too to to just loosen up from 
the self guilt though that that comes upon my own mind you know my on myself because it's always there and so that's been another way to use the metaphor of the box in the other direction because he caught himself so he got upset that i said a word so he he found out that he was going the wrong way so he before he turned he changed his mind but then i had already spoken (laughs) i think yeah so that was Mm. the opportunity to release the guilt that all of a sudden (laughs) came up Mm. well and and too all the decisions are already made too so yeah there there can easily be a a hook into my own you know belief in guilt or self-guilt but (laughs) But I had seen like all the decisions that were made. It's like I made all the decisions. Then Jenny made a de- seemed to make a decision, and then all, all the things started playing out. So it's like all in this like two second scenario. Like you know, I can see I can see all of it being played mm-hmm. out. And then I try because there's guilt in the mind. I try to show you that all the decisions have been made, but it's just a whole mind game, really, and kind of silly, but. Yeah, it's beautiful that yeah, you're anyway. willing to uh, allow that to come in. You know, because a lot of times relationships, as I did a talk the other night, which was about all the the script is written and all the the decisions that seem to still be happening are all part of a a composite. Um, called the unholy instant and then actually you can open up into that place of joining and connection at any point and feel the innocence immediately from that and that's then you are more drawn to the holy instant when you feel that innocence so so it's 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 getting out of the blame game and it's uh, getting out of the guilt it's exposing the guilt in all of its nuances in a way in which the the whole purpose is to experience innocence and and no guilt and that's what a holy relationship is is a a relationship it's so devoted to forgiveness that it's a it has an innocence a glowing shining radiating radiating innocence uh, that sometimes is even unexpected but it's very powerful like andy's show today talking about this kitten and these ugly pictures, and he persisted. His family didn't want the kitten, and the pictures were ugly. The ugliest kitten he'd ever seen. It cost fifteen hundred dollars, and and all the it had to drive four hours. And then when he got there, it was this radiant, glowing, the most beautiful kitten that he'd ever seen. But it took a lot of faith to just follow in the face of of all the appearances and images and judgments of the world. And that's that. That really describes relationship. It takes a lot of faith and, and with all these obstacles and all these unconscious judgments that are coming up the surface to hang in there and really find that radiant brilliance. And uh, aside from just going off and meditating, you know, this is a, we're using relationships in a very active way for Bottoms Up. So thank you for being our Bottoms Up couple bottoms winner. Up. <laughs> today <laughs> example <laughs> beautiful thank you all for tuning in big camera over there the big camera <laughs>